Hello friends, myself Professor Vikrant Monde. Now, today I am going to just deliver a lecture on spur gears and its gears classification. So here, before going in detail of the nomenclature for the spur gear, first of all, we will see the classifications of the gears. So here now, how the gears they are classified? First of all, gears they are classified as per their uh, shape, size, their profiles, and second thing, depending upon the position of their axis. As we know, the gear pair, one, one is the pinion, another one is the gear, and both of them, they are mounted on each an individual shaft. So if you see the first spur gear, it and helical gear and hearing bone gear, as it is similar to helical gear, both of these, all these gears, they comes under the category for the parallel axis position for the shaft. Then second, bevel, then straight bevel and meter gear, they comes under the category of perpendicular and intersecting axis. And last, internal gears, worm gears and rack and pinion, they comes under the category of non-intersecting and perpendicular axis. Here, the spur gear, they are having the peaks parallelly cut to the axis position and in helical the teeth they are cut at an angle called as helix angle and so it is uh, the gear teeth shape is like a helix so such type of gears are called as helical gear and helical gear, this hearing bone gear is similar to helical gear and one disadvantage point of helical gear such as thrust force is being neglected in hearing bone gear then in bevel gear this bevel gear we are using in differential gearbox or uh, just having the stability of the vehicle, we are using this bevel gear in the differential gearbox system. Then internal gear, the difference between the external and internal gear is here. One gear is having internal teeth and another is having external and external teeth is meeting with the internal part. Then second is the worm gear where the worm is having a number of threads or starts such as seven to eight and the worm wheel is big. And here, the positive point of this worm gear is they are having very high reduction ratio, that is 100 is to 1. Means for 100 revolution of worm, we will get one revolution of the uh, worm wheel, the worm gear. Then next, rack and pinion, this has been used in the steering system, where the rack is having an infinite diameter and pinion is having some finite diameter. Okay, so this is the basic classification of the gears. Now we are going in detail of the nomenclature of the spur gear. Now here if you see, so this is the configuration of the spur gear. So what are the terminologies? Here we are using such as addendum, detendum, then face width, addendum circle, top land, face and climb of the teeth, then the total depth, working depth, clearance, and pitch circle, and addendum and detendum circle. Now we will see each and every term in the next slide. So what do you mean by pitch circle? Pitch circle is nothing but it is the mid circle of the teeth. So this is the circle which is passing through the center of the teeth. It is called as the pitch circle. So basic terminology of the pitch circle is it is an imaginary circle by which you will get the pure rolling motion between a gear pair. So when we are saying a gear pair it is in meeting position, so the pitch circle will be meeting at one common point. So this, this may be the pitch circle of the pinion and another may be the pitch circle of the gear. So here if you see, this is the pitch point. So at this pitch point, the, both the pitch circle of gear and pinion will meet. So that whatever the circle is forming, that circle is called as the pitch circle. Then what do you mean by pitch circle diameter? The diameter of the pitch circle for the gear and pinion, it is nothing but what? It is the PCD, or it is not nothing but it is called as pitch circle diameter. And usually the size of the gears are being specified by this PCD. Then next is pitch point. As I have already told, how this pitch point is obtained? The pitch point is obtained as the meeting point or meeting point of the circle, pitch circle of the this pinion and pitch circle of the gear. So where they are meeting, such so, so point is called as the pitch point. And pitch surface nothing but it is the surface of the rolling disc. Means the same part of the teeth means of meshing gears. It may be pinion or gear. Next is addendum. What do you mean by addendum? It is the radial distance, this radial distance from the top of the teeth to the pitch circle. So this part is called as addendum. It is the radial distance from top of the teeth to the pitch circle is the addendum. And simultaneously, the dedendum. The dedendum is the distance, radial distance itself. 
from the pitch circle to the bottom of the head, it is called as the dead end nerve. Then whatever the circle which is passing through the top of the teeth, it is called as addendum circle. And whatever the circle which is passing through the bottom of the teeth, it is called as the dedendum circle. So mostly addendum and dedendum, they are also used to specify the uh, teeth nomenclature. The next circular pitch. What do you mean by pitch? Means here we are having angular part. So here we are having circular part. We are measuring this circular part along the pitch circle. So circular pitch is nothing but it is the distance from a point on a teeth to the corresponding point on the adjacent teeth. So such type of distance it is called nothing but what is the circular pitch. And it is you know, generally denoted by pi d by t. This is the basic formula for the circular pitch for denotations. Then afterwards, what do you mean by diameter pitch? We can just say it is the ratio or it is, we can say it is the inverse of the circular pitch or it is the ratio of number of teeth to the PCD, this diameter pitch. We are using for finding the formulas. So here we are using that part. The next thing is a module. So module is nothing but what it is the ratio of each circle diameter to the number of teeth. And mostly this module is having no any unit. And uh, this module it is coded to the addendum and dedendum. The addendum, standard value of addendum is one module. And the standard value of dedendum is 1.157 module. What in the clearance here? Now, clearance is nothing but it is the distance from the bottom of teeth to the working depth. Means here, at this part, the another gear or pinion, top of teeth will be here, and this is the bottom part. So it is nothing but it is the radial distance from top of the teeth of the other meeting part to the bottom of teeth in a machine gear. And the circle passing through the top of machine gear is nothing but what it is the clearance circle. Means here, in this part, there will be another tier top of teeth. And this is the bottom part. So whatever the circle that is passing, it is nothing but the clearance. So why there is need of clearance here? As you see here, this is the dedendum part, and this is the addendum part. Now, if this uh, top of the teeth, if it enters here, so there will be digging or there will be removal of material from the bottom part of the teeth. So there is need of providing of clearance. So here we are providing clearance circle. The next definition is the total depth. What do you mean by total depth? Total depth is nothing but it is a radial distance from top of the teeth to the bottom of the teeth. Here also it is mentioned, or it is also equal to sum of addendum and dedendum. Same. The distance from the pitch circle to the top of teeth and distance from the pitch circle to the bottom of teeth. This total distance is called as the total depth for a teeth. Then what is the working depth here? As I already told in the last slide. That here we are providing clearance. Why there is need of clearance? So that there will be no any removal of metal from the bottom part of the tip. So here working depth is nothing but what is the sum of addenda of either of the gears. Or it is distance, radial distance from the top of the tip to the clearance circle. Okay. So in such way we are uh, defining the working depth definition. Then what do you mean by tooth thickness? Tooth thickness is nothing but what is the width of the tip. Tooth thickness is the width of the tip shown here. And then after what is tooth space? It is nothing but the space between the two teeth or two adjacent teeth. We can see it as a tooth space. And the next definition is the backlash. It is the difference between tooth space and tooth thickness. This backlash we are uh, used to avoid the jamming of the gear. So this is the definition for the backlash. That is the it is the difference between the tooth space and tooth thickness, which is measured along the teeth circle here. Whatever the references we are taking for the other parameters, we have to just consider this speed circle so that you can uh, find the other parameters also. Now, next part is the face of the tooth. So here, if you see the red zone here particularly is the face of the tooth. So whatever the surface of the teeth, which is above the teeth circle is nothing but it is the face of the tooth. And whatever the blue portion, which is below the pitch circle, it is the flank of the tooth. Okay. And what do you mean by profile? So this is the profile of the teeth. This is the profile of the teeth. The top side of the teeth is called as the top leg, and the bottom part is called as the bottom leg. So this is the bottom leg, and this is the top leg. And here, if you see, it is the face width which is measured along the parallel to the axis of the shaft. Here we are measuring the face width parallel to its axis. And this small corner zone, this is nothing but what is the fillet radius. 
it is the radius that connects the root circle means here the radial circle is also called as root part or root circle so here the radius that connects the root circle to the profile of the tip so this zone is called as the fillet of the radius now next important parameter that is the pressure angle now here if you see how the pressure angle is been measured so either you can consider this as the gear or this as the gear so if it is this is gear now this will be pinion and both of these two teeth they are coming and meeting at this point red point so here if you see this is one line so this one line we are drawing tangent to the pitch circle okay so this will be the dedendum circle here it may be pitch circle and this is the addendum circle so this line is the tangent to the pitch circle means at the pitch point and this line is perpendicular so this line is perpendicular to the point of contact of the two teeth so how the pressure angle is been measured it is the angle between common normal drawn at the point of contact and the common tangent at the pitch point so whatever the angle these two lines they are making that angle is called as pressure angle for the teeth and the standard pressure angle value is near about 20 degree 14.5 degree to 20 degree so after seeing the nomenclature of the teeth now we will see the profile of the teeth so there are two types of profile one is involute another one is cycloidal so what is the basic difference between this involute and cycloidal so here for example for sh uh, showing this involute teeth here we have taken one cylinder or a circular disc on this circular disc we have just uh, tied one rock means this uh, what is it a string or a wire whose one end is fixed and other end is in the hand of the human so first of all we have to wrap this string or wire on the cylinder surface or the circular disc surface and then with the help of this hand just to unwrap the or unwound the string or wire from the disc or cylinder so whatever the profile this end portion is making or a point which is making on the string so this profile is nothing but what it is called as the involute tip so here this representation is now shown here as itself so this is the one disc whose one end is attached to one string and this is the another disc so this part is the pinion this part is the gear now this is the base circle means this is the base cylinder means what this is the dedendum circle for the gear and this is the dedendum circle for the pinion so if you first of all fix this particular gear if you fix this disc and if you try to rotate this part then whatever the profile it is generating this t is nothing but it is a stylus we have just put their stylus or a marker so it will now trace one path that is called as te when you are fixing this gear three and when you are giving motion to this two so whatever the strike this uh, stylus or marker it will trace a mark, this point t to e as an arc and if you fix this point to miss this disc two and if you try to rotate this disc three then this marker or stylus it will trace the another part that is td so this td and te is nothing but what is the profile of the teeth and which is going outside the dendritic circle and it is not coming inside the base circle or dendritic circle you can say so this is the involute teeth profile and next profile teeth profile is the cycloidal teeth profile so here if you see now there was the base cylinder base part so this is the base part so cycloidal teeth is basically classified into two types one is epicycloid another one is hypocycloid the whatever the teeth profile which is outside the base is nothing but cycloidal tooth profile and this epicycloidal tooth profile is the base circle and whatever the path this point p is traveling over the base cylinder base circle above its part so this profile is called as epicycloid and whatever the path which is travel inside the base circle it is called as hypocycloid so this cycloidal teeth profile is basically classified into two types that is epicycloid and hypocycloid so here the positive point of the cycloidal teeth is that there will be no any removal of material because the teeth it will exist outside the base circle also and it will exist inside the base circle also so here the positive point of cycloidal teeth is that there will be no any removal of material but the disadvantage point is that the manufacturing cost for this cycloidal teeth is maximum as compared to involute teeth and time consumption is also more so for that purpose we are mostly using involute teeth okay so this is the cycloidal teeth profile how it is generating if you see here this is the baseline 
whatever the circle which is means this epicycloid which is moving outside the base circle it will form the face of the pin and below the base circle it will form the flank of the pin so in, in this way we can just get the two tooth profiles one is the involute teeth profile another one is the cycloid teeth profile thank you